Oh my goodness. Um, I don't like to go off script. I do use a teleprompter. Um, most people that know me know that I don't go off script. Um, but I will say St. Luke's is a powerhouse and, a, and a, it makes us a healthcare hub. So thank you for sponsoring today. Thank you, Christy, uh, for the introduction and also to the chamber, the board, the staff. I think you're all just absolutely amazing. Um, you collaborate, uh, you advocate, and uh, we are lucky to have such a great organization. Um, I, I know that Christy recognized people, but I have to recognize people because uh, of how important they are. Uh, so there are people in the room that I would like to call out at this point um, because it's really quite humbling to have elected representation uh, representatives from other jurisdictions take the time to attend the state of the city w with their very busy schedules. And so I would like to, uh, I don't know if they're here, but they did sign up, two people uh, that were uh, going to be here today were the Jackson County legis legislators, uh, both of, of which had been working really hard to mitigate the actions of the county with regard to the excessively increased tax assessments. So signed up to be here, I didn't see them, but signed up to be here were County Legislator Megan Marshall and legis Legislator Sean Smith. Are you guys here? Please stand if you are. Um, no, okay, well they did sign up and I do appreciate their efforts. I just, I mean, hey, I have to, I have to, I have to build those relationships when they're going to go to bat for us, and they have been uh, really trying to be take a more rational and reasonable approach to uh, to the county. So, I do wish them success and and favor as they fight on our behalf. Um, I have leaned on heavily uh, this group of mayors up here uh, in the past five years. We do collaborate continually to send a united message, whether it's to the county regarding the tax assessments and the appeal process, or the state of Missouri and, the Kans and Kansas City regarding our opposition to the potential landfill at our doorsteps. Um, so I would like you to stand as I say your names, and, and I will wait. So I'm sorry you're getting, uh, getting this twice, but we have uh, uh, the charismatic veteran and newly married Mayor Carson Ross of Blue Springs. Please stand. Yep. We, we have the diplomatic, pragmatic, and steadfast Mayor Leonard Jones of Grandview. Yep. The authentic, the candid, and tough but kind-hearted Mayor Mike McDonough. Raytown. The determined, resolute, and dedicated Mayor Chris Turnbow of Raymore. And the dependable and commendable and what was he doing? Serving desserts? Uh, Mayor Mike Larson of Sugar Creek. <laughs> so thank you gentlemen for your support. Sorry, my little thing's not moving here. And unity. We also have uh, Lee Summit School Board members here, as uh, Christy Johnson Ware mentioned. Representing the Lee Summit R7 School Board are board members Ryan Murdoch, Regina Garrett, and Erica Miller. Yes. And I just want to say I've, I really appreciate, we appreciate as council, the leadership and relationship building that Ryan Murdoch has brought to our community and, to, and look forward to working with board members Garrett and Miller because our citizens want the city to build collaborative relationships with our schools. Um, so Superintendent Dr. Buck is not here, but Dr. Shelton is here. And I just want to say thank you to you and your staff uh, and the community part. Uh, you've been instrumental in working with the city and our community partners in workforce development, economic development, and building great schools so that wonderful families want to move here. So thank you, Dr. Shelton and board members. All right, no longer the new city manager. Mark Dunning is about to reach his one year anniversary. Where are you, Mark? He is, Mark, Mark's leadership and, and collaborative style has been critical in keeping Lee Summit moving forward. So thank you, Mark. Um, at this point, I want to I wanna go to the city council. I always say leadership starts at the top. And a strong city council and, or school board enables a city manager or school superintendent to be the most effective and successful as the community needs them to be. So we are blessed to have a highly functioning, civic-minded, uh, city council with the highest professional standards and conduct. So as I say your name, please stand and remain standing until I have, have uh, announced everyone. So 
First, I have Mayor Pro Tem Bethel Lopez of District 3. He brings the council together as a team and represents us across the metro. Please stand. Yep. Council Member Edson of District 3 has been a rock for the city and the community with seven years of service, advocating for infrastructure, public safety, and attainable housing. Yep. The highly engaged Council Member Fred DeMora of District 4 has also championed our public works, public safety, and serves our legislative as our legislative chair to help us build strong relationships with our state and federal elected officials. <laughs> Member uh, also representing District 4 is Council Member Faith Hodges bringing passion, integrity, and high expectations to this council. <laughs> council Member Hillary Shields of District 1 was not able to attend, but she continues to be a pragmatic problem solver. Uh, with her approach to every single meeting and every single decision we make, and she also serves as the critical in the critical role of finance and budget chair. <laughs> and then representing District One also is the extremely accessible Council Member Mia Pryor, bringing her council insight and perspective from all angles, and always maintaining a positive attitude. Representing District 2, so that'd be, for those of you that aren't familiar with Lee Summit, that's the west side of town. We have Council Member Andrew Felker challenging and encouraging the city and council to weigh the implications and consequences of our daily decisions to protect our city. Yep. While his counterpart in District 2, Council Member John Lovell, I think he's over here, yes, protects our taxpayer dollars and is continually assessing our return on investment. He also tends, hold on, he also tends to question or rant about the spending of taxpayer dollars elsewhere, such as, such as at Jackson County, and to our visiting legislators, we know, you know, that they are doing all they can, but it has really been a challenge for all of us. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all. I'm sorry, they really deserve this, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about them, but I do appreciate all of your service. I, I appreciate the talents you bring to our team. Uh, we do have an amazing city council, though, because our citizens are engaged and making good decisions at the polls. We are also fortunate to have such honorable people that uh, will make the commitment to run and serve pu uh, in public office. Um, at this point, it is a great honor to have the Truman Heartland Community Foundation Lee Summit Citizen of the Year, Carl Chinnery, in attendance. I met Carl Chinnery more than 20 years ago and I've watched him make a difference for our community in the most wonderful and inspirational ways. <clears throat> he has made a difference in the lives of so many citizens, nonprofits, schools, businesses, and more. No one has been a better role model and lived by the rotary motto, service above self, more than Carl Chinnery. Carl's ripple effects on, on the lives of others span not only decades, but lifetimes, as his legacy of giving back has left an indelible mark on us all. Okay, I'm not going to give an entire speech about his astonishing resume, but I, I do have to say a few things. I've been in the same room with Carl Chinnery over a thousand times, and he has inspired me the way he has always been inviting and welcoming people to get involved, to experience the joy of community and the, fulfill, the fulfillment of giving back. He role modeled to me to think bigger, set greater goals, and not limit yourself. If the organization's goal was 10 new members, Carl raised it to 100. If, he, if we were going to try to raise 10, uh, $1 million, Carl challenged us to raise $10 million. When you personally ask Carl Chinnery for advice, prepare to be challenged because he doesn't see limits in you the way you do yourself. He really is like Dr. Seuss in that he will tell you that you're off to great places. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. I, it is true that I've been in the room with Carl over a thousand times if you include all the events, organization uh, meetings, luncheons, boards, commissions we've served on together. And I will confess that there have been times that I have often questioned, and this is, this is true, my presence and purpose. I mean, I would scan the room and ask myself, why am I here? Do I really want to do all this work and spend all this time giving back, volunteering, and serving others? 
because there is a toll on you and your family. There is a toll on your business. And during difficult times, there can be a toll on your stress level. And without fail, as I would look around the room, <laughs> too funny. I've read this speech a thousand times and I never once cracked. I would look around the room and I would see Carl Chinnery and it all made sense. Yes, I want to be here. I want to be like him. I want to be like Carl. I want to invite and welcome, challenge and raise the bar, and not see limits in others. So to Carl. I was so excited to talk to Carl that I almost forgot to acknowledge my wife, Hillary Baird, and all the, all the other family members that uh, make our lives in public office possible. Um, I'm surprised Hillary was able to make it uh, today because I thought she would be at home watching the Netflix series, The Quarterback, with Patrick Mahomes, like for the seventh time. For those of you who don't know, obviously you do now, Hillary is all about those Chiefs. And can you believe that we are only three weeks away from the Chiefs kicking off another championship season? Can you believe we have been in five straight AFC championship games and three out of the last four Super Bowls? Coming off of a Super Bowl championship, we're the number one ranked team in the NFL. How in the world are we staying on top year after year? One reason is because two of the greatest players of the NFL are on our team, Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. And as great as they are on the field, they have played a role off the field to put the Chiefs in a position to compete for championships. They each could be, can make the case for being the highest paid players in the NFL at their positions. However, Patrick Mahomes is the seventh highest paid quarterback in the NFL. Travis Kelsey may be the greatest tight end of all time, and he is currently the third highest paid tight end in the NFL, and the 52nd highest paid overall. Kelsey and Mahomes say they like winning as a team more than being paid the most at their individual positions. Mahomes says, I worry about legacy and winning rings more than I do making money at this point. He goes on to say, if you want to, you want to keep the bar pushing, I've made enough money where I'll be set for the rest of my life, but at the same time, you've got to find that line where you're making a good amount of money but you're still keeping a lot of great players around you so you can win these Super Bowls. Kelsey echoes the sentiment. With a base salary of $11 million this season, he recently stated, stated that when I saw Tyreek go f get $30 million a year, in the back of my head I was like, man, that's two to three times what I'm making now. I'm like, the free market looks fun until you go somewhere and you don't win. I love winning. Yep. I know that having a lot of talent on your team increases your chances of winning and helps you stay on top. Similarly, when you look at winning in the business world, no one understands it better than Warren Buffett. Buffett says he likes a sure thing. He likes wonderful brands. It says you have to take care of your brand. If you take care of it, then you can stay on top. The biggest killer of businesses is complacency. A f you want a re restlessness, a feeling that someone is always after you. But you're going to stay ahead of them and be on the move. That's why he started buying Coca-Cola shares 40 years ago, and he's never sold a share. Coke leads the soft drink industry year after year and is constantly challenged. But they're continually making decisions, sacrificing, innovating, pushing forward to secure their number one ranking and dominance. According to Buffett, Apple is the same type of company. He recently said iPhone users display such an unwavering brand loyalty that they would not permanently part ways with their phones even if offered $10,000. Buffett often speaks in interviews about being the best in value, the best in quality and service, and about winning. 
He says, the danger is in resting on your laurels, a saying that means you stop working towards your workings towards lost my spot, a saying that means you stop working towards more accomplishments and bask in your past achievements. He says, the best companies never rest. They're relentless to increase their market dominance the way Apple makes upgrades and changes every single year to the iPhone to try to stay ahead of Samsung and others. And we see the same battles for market share and dominance with Google, Facebook, Twitter, and Amazon. They're all innovating, sacrificing one program to create a better tool and better experience. They have lots of competitors challenging them for the top spots, challenging to be the place where you and I spend our time. Can you really win if you only have the boomers or the millennials? The winner is going to find a way to provide the best services to both. They will have to continually innovate, sacrifice, and push themselves to be better. They all try to steal each other's talented employees away from each other, but that is where culture comes into play. Will the employees stay to be a part of a championship environment, or will they go for more money? It takes constant hard work to balance it out you need to pay well, but you need to make the workplace enjoyable. You need to provi provide the best services. And that means <clears throat> sometimes you have to spend money on new services. If you want to remain on top, you don't get to stop doing what you did to get there. All right. Recently, Livability named Lee Summit in its list of top 100 best places to live. This was the 10th annual list from Livability, celebrating the best small and mid-sized communities across the US. The list is based on extensive research into relocation trends, economic variables and factors that influence quality of life. And of course, Lee Summit scored exceptionally well in the schools, economy, transportation, and Bobby, healthcare industries. Lee Summit is one of the only two Missouri cities on the list. Incredibly, in also in June of this year, Fortune came out with its list of 50 best places to live for families, and Lee Summit was 14th on the list. To select the best places to live for families in each state, Fortune evaluated nearly 1,900 cities and reviewed more than 200,000 unique data points. According to Fortune, this ranking <coughs> excuse me, showcases the city in each state where multi-generational families are most likely to have access to critical resources, community support, and financial well-being. I don't know how you all feel about this, but does it really get any better than this type of recognition? From a community or city perspective, doesn't being ranked in the top 5% of all cities by numerous sources put us at the top? And it makes me wonder how we got here. What makes us deserving of such accolades? I know they have their algorithms and their 200,000 unique data points, but what specifically has happened that we should start winning awards and recognition, recognition like this? I think it's an important question because like Travis Kelsey, I like winning such awards and recognition and I want to stay on top. Do we want to conti continue to be a premier city in the US? Do we want to continue to push and be even better or are we going to rest on our laurels like Warren Buffett warned against? Are we going to take care of our brand like Coca-Cola and Apple do by innovating and relentlessly pursuing to be better each and every day? Or will we become complacent? I know this, to stay on top, to keep winning, it takes a team effort. It takes talent and loyalty, sacrifice and, and innovation, a relentless attitude to improve, to be the most livable, the best places for families, the best place to work and play, the best for multi-generational families, we will need talent and more than just a couple of stars. I don't know if this is in their algorithms, but I know we are winning recognition because we have talent at City Hall, in the administration, in public works, in the water departments, and of course, in our police and fire departments. We can't be the best unless we retain talent, recruit talent, and create an environment where our employees want to remain and be a part of a winning culture. Over the last five years, we have gone from one of the lowest paid entry-level police officer and firefighter pay to one of the best in the metro. We made sacrifices 
to get all employees pay up from 10% below market five years ago, and we've continued compensation increases each year and added another 6% increase this year just to keep up with the wage inflation and the incredibly competitive labor market. Had we not made these tough decisions, we would not have been able to keep or recruit our talented employees during the last few years. It's a constant battle to be the best, and we have to continually push and prioritize to keep and attract talent. The day we stop pushing is the day we lose ground. That's not all, though. We have talent in our community and on city council. We're winning because of the civic leaders in our community, like Carl Chinnery, making our organizations great. Our award-winning schools, led by talented people and board members. Our nonprofits, such as Prodeo, helping teens, Rediscover, taking on mental health issues, Hillcrest, transitioning the homeless, and more. We have a city council with all the great skill sets and commendable attributes I previously mentioned, working together to make the best decisions we can. And I know full well that companies that look to expand or invest in promising cities do their research and seek out communities working together like we are. These intangibles add up, and we need to continue to advocate for bringing talent and continuous improvement in all segments of our community. Okay, you cannot be a top city for livability and best practices, or and best places to live for families unless your citizens are safe. I do not believe any municipality has done better at supporting public safety than Lee Summit has in the last five years. We have heavily invested in facilities, tools, and equipment such as body and vehicle cameras for all, for all officers and vehicles. We were early adopters of the mental health co-responder program to increase wellness checks and more. We broke ground on new fire stations four and five in the last year. That totals three new or renovated stations in the last five years. In addition, our citizens passed a one half cent public safety sales tax in 2022 to address our needs and growth. We have followed through with providing an ambulance and medical staff at all seven fire stations to increase coverage and decrease response times. Our citizens support us again by passing a bold 186 million no tax increase bond in 2023 to address public safety and infrastructure issues and needs. With those funds, we will build a new state of the art joint safety operations center right beside the police headquarters that will house the fire administration, co-locate police and fire dispatch, and integrate our traffic department for coordinated safety operations. We will renovate Fire Station 1 in the downtown to add additional operations and renovate the existing Fire Station Number 5 to turn it into a long-desired police substation on Highway 150 near Raintree. We will purchase land at the airport for a combined aircraft, rescue, and firefighting station. Many of the infrastructure, uh, infrastructure improvements will be also be addressing public safety because busy roads with little to no shoulders like Sharer Road, Lakewood Boulevard, and South Douglas are simply not as safe as they could be. These initiatives and voter-approved measures are our way of pressing forward, continually improving, and staying on top. If you want to take care of your brand the way Buffett recommends, you have to have a winning strategy. It took 18 months for us to get through a strategic plan finalized in 2020 that brought together our city council, city administration, community partners, and citizens. Together, we created a, a strategic plan for the city and community partners to follow as we make decisions to abide by our vision statement, to create a vibrant community ensuring the finest quality of life for generations, with a mission to enrich lives <clears throat> through co collaboration, creativity, and commitment. I've already mentioned many ways we're addressing one of the seven crit critical success factors that came out of the strategic plan, ensuring city services and infrastructure support a quality of life. A couple other factors are being pursued with the help of citizen boards and commissions. We reorganized to align them with the strategic plan. The Wellness Commission will focus on community health and well-being in our city, including developing a network of nonprofit, faith-based, and educational organizations 
and by supporting fitness by increasing access to fitness and recreation opportunities. While the Cultural Commission will focus on expanding cultural and recreational spaces, events, and programs. A fourth critical success factor is collaborative relations with our education partners. Schools are a major factor in livability and fortune's best places for families. We made a significant shift here as well in the last few years. We've held four, excuse me, we've held joint meetings between the city council and LSR 7 school board four years in a row. We meet to collaborate and find alignment. Similarly, city staff and I continu have continual meetings with Blue Springs School District, Summit Christian Academy, St. Michael's, University of Central Missouri, and MCC Longview. I couldn't be prouder of these relationships and I look forward to building upon them. We are working collaboratively with our award-winning schools in workforce development and supporting their many initiatives and programs at the Missouri Innovation Campus and Summit Technology. I do think it's important to recognize the continued time and investment the school district has been making, the passion and leadership of Dr. Buck and Dr. Shelton in prioritizing workforce development, training, career readiness, and more in these collaborations. So thank you to, to the school district. When it comes to our critical success factor, strong neighborhoods and housing choices. The strategic plan put together by our community partners and citizens and, and approved unanimously by city council states clearly that we want to encourage affordable housing, to allow for more housing options and to consider policies to diversify housing choices. We also spent a year discussing a comprehensive plan with the planning commission and we got their unanimous approval in 2021 that gave us very specific parameters as to how we want to the, the community to grow, including the composition of density for our home dwellings with a desired healthy balance of 65% single family and 35% multifamily. The city council and planning commission have been diligently following the parameters of the strategic and comprehensive plans respectively with a margin of error that allows for continued growth at this ratio. We need a diversity of housing because families want to move here. The Planning Commission and City Council have approved quite a few duplex and townhome developments in the last few years because people want to move to Lee Summit and experience our community and our cultural and recreational amenities. We've approved amenity-driven apartments the last few years because our kids have been graduating from college and need a place to live in Lee Summit. But some of our and also because some of our parents don't want to or can't keep up with their house, but they don't want to move into an assisted living type situation. We've approved them because people divorce and mom got the house and dad wants to stay close to the kids, so he rents an apartment. All of these factors contribute to the livability ranking as well as the fortune best places to live ranking. We will continue to be mindful of our strategic and comprehensive plans when it comes to our desired density and we'll continue to make decisions based on quality of construction and the amenities these developments provide. We're quite simply following our strategic plan and comprehensive plan that we're designed to win. I say this with full awareness that we must take care of our brand the way Warren Buffett warned. We certainly are an affluent suburb with high demand for our beautiful single family homes and we will continue to attract that type of builder and that buyer. But we can't alienate a generation or a demographic any more than we can alienate a shift in public sentiment such as renters by choice. We will continue, continue to allow for a diversity of housing choices by maintaining a steady and mindful approach that we've been taking in alignment with our strategic and, strat plan and comprehensive plan. Because the housing affordability crisis the nation is struggling with and to which Lee Summit is not immune, is not going away. Okay, where I believe we have the most, been most successful at adapting to the needs and desires of our citizens and the ever-changing market is in our strategic economic development. I know for sure that it's difficult to get into the livability top 100 and the fortune best 50 cities for families to live without the amazing restaurants, businesses, jobs, and commercial activity centers we have been approving, supporting, and investing in the last five years. The city council and city administration have been building a healthy economy with a better balance of residential and commercial tax base, bringing billions of tax dollars, excuse me, billions of dollars in commercial activity 
and approvals over the last five years. I do want to give credit uh, to the city and council and, and administration because we were told for the last 10 years that we could not attract industrial specs, spec buildings, because we didn't have pad ready sites and the cost of land was too high. However, the city council took things into our own hands and we attracted and approved over, the, over 2 million square feet in high quality industrial spec buildings just in the last few years. Scannell alone is putting in 783,000 square feet behind the police headquarters. Lee Summit Industrial, the Odells, are putting in nearly 600,000 square feet just south of Bailey Road Bridge. And Ward Development has been building numerous properties ranging from 20 to 250,000 square feet near the airport. Mike Atchison is building industrial buildings as well as med medical offices <coughs> and more off Colburn Road. These developments will bring thousands of jobs to Lee Summit and tremendous ac economic activity for our surrounding businesses and city. Five years ago, we were also told Lee Summit doesn't have any demand for hotels, yet we recently approved two hotels, a Hilton Home 2 and a Marriott Townhome Suites at the new development Discovery Park and have numerous other developments such as Paragon Star and potentially Shamrock Village with hotels in their plans. Discovery Park along Colburn is a phenomenal mixed-use development that will fe feature a river walk like setting in later phases but its first phase includes the two hotels, restaurants, fitness center, retail and office space, an animal hospital, a pet spa, and luxury apartments. With the Colburn Road improvements that have begun, this will become a game-changing economic hub on the north side of Lee Summit. And congratulations to Paragon Star and the new state-of-the-art soccer fields that opened this year. They are building office and retail currently and ramping things up to prepare for the World Cup in 2026. Summit Orchard, where Cooper's Hawk and more reside, is working on numerous exciting developments, including another hotel for our city. That would be a third one. On the north side of the development, a choice hotel, as well as two automotive dealerships, will be coming before the council in the near future. Streets of West Pryor, and there are now 12 restaurants, is still adding to that tremendous development. And the same developer, Drake Development, has submitted a PDP for redeveloping the 35-acre Odessa Auto Auction site at 50 and 291 highways. I guess all those microchips finally showed up for those four trucks, so <laughs> we'll get them, we'll move along. And let's not forget about the 4,200 acres of undeveloped land that PRI has in our city. PRI has now transitioned thousands of acres to a private company called Suburban Land Reserve Inc., which will commonly be called SLR. So this week, SLR announced that they're putting on the market over 1,800 acres for development. While the combined offering is one of the largest active listings, land listings in the Midwest, it will be offered in parcels from 20 to over 300 acres, depending on the use. Of the 836 acres on the market north of Colburn, all the way up past Struther Road on, Todd George, on the Todd George side, over 500 acres are targeted for light industrial and commercial development. This location on 470 Highway is a jewel, just minutes away from 70 Highway and perfectly centered in eastern Jackson County. This mixed-use area will bring thousands of jobs and thousands of residents to our city. On the south side of Lee Summit, SLR is offering many parcels totaling over 1,000 acres, with the bulk of it targeting single-family development. Thankfully, we have recently completed those strat and comprehensive plans to help us create a fiscally sustainable, balanced approach for this long-term development. We've been growing in a tremendous way the last five years. Going forward, we will have SLR and the 1,800 acres and the many developments I've mentioned. And many other are in conceptual or pre-application status. We need to support these developments as well as our current business community with a plan for targeting businesses, for business retention, and for workforce development. 
the next couple of months, the city council will be setting the course for a new economic development organization to address targeting businesses, business retention, and workforce development. Because the city of Lee Summit deserves a great economic development organization that wants to work hand in hand with the city, the city council, and all of our community partners. We deserve an economic development organization that sees our potential and sets big goals. And we deserve an economic development organization that executes a strategic plan in alignment with the city. We're looking at best practices and we're going to incorporate them to create a long-standing, successful organization to help us continuously improve now and for decades to come. We will get this done with the civic leaders in the community that do not see limits and will support our efforts to help Lee Summit succeed and grow in a healthy and balanced way. You know what happens when you invest in talent, infrastructure, a strategic plan, and don't accept limitations placed upon you? You will create an economic development ecosystem that creates activity that begets more activity. When you welcome and attract businesses, the multiplier effect takes place. Supplier jobs and indirect jobs follow. When you bring a diversity of new homes and a diversity of new commercial buildings to your city, it diversifies and broadens your tax base. When you bring jobs or even day trips to your community, your existing businesses prosper and your city tax revenues soar. All this planning and accolades, and I haven't even mentioned the investment we are making in our most cherished amenity, our award-winning downtown. Our incredible downtown didn't invent, it, didn't invent itself overnight. It has taken decades and decades of planning and investment by our predecessors and stakeholders to continually improve. I've always said we're going to build upon the greatness of our downtown by expanding on the charm of our most cherished gem. The downtown farmer's market and performance venue is about to become a reality. The architectural drawings are being finalized. The infrastructure work will begin this fall. The groundbreaking for the farmer's market building will begin in the spring with completion by spring of 2025. The farmer's market and public spaces will be an expansion of the charm of the downtown. But the experience we will provide will be even more surreal. The best way to share the experience that we are looking to create is to illustrate it to you via the following 3D tour. This fall, we will begin working on the infrastructure for the plaza and market in front of City Hall. We will create an experience that few other activity centers or downtowns in the Midwest can rival. It will be a local destination for our citizens, but also a regional destination. We will be creating the most intimate, inviting, welcoming atmosphere in a park-like environment. environment. It will provide venues for music and art, such as the Wicked Garden, as well as fitness and recreational activities in multiple public spaces. Whether working outside at the kiosks in front of City Hall on a beautiful day, or cherishing time with your children or grandchildren at the playground, there will be something for everyone. It will draw visitors and multi-generational families for day visits and weekend getaways, and bring more shoppers to our downtown businesses and more sales tax dollars to our city. The farmer's market itself will accommodate 100 vendors, including 50 stalls inside a magnificent multifunctional facility that will be operational year round to allow for an extended farmer's market season, hobby shows, holiday fairs, and cultural art activities. And I can only imagine music festivals and performance events that will be conducted under the gorgeous canopy. The farmer's market and performance venue will be a landmark in our community for the next hundred years and expand upon the charm and experience of our award-winning downtown. We are very excited about this. Um, 
and we need to continually be improving and working on our brand. And this is our most cherished brand, the Heart of Lee Summit. I do hope you can see how dedicated the city council and city administration have been working on behalf of the citizens and community. And going forward, we will continue to follow the strategic plan. We will not succumb to resting on our laurels. We will move forward and fiercely protect our brand. We will be restless, constantly looking over our shoulder to stay ahead. We will innovate and adapt to the ever-changing market. But there's one more critical thing we need. We need your continued support and advocacy. No matter what role you may have in our community, citizen, stakeholder, business owner, nonprofit employee, or community partner, we need your inspiration. We need to look around the room and see you like we do, we do today. It takes a team of talent around the city to keep winning, just like Mahomes and Kelsey understand and embrace. It takes a culture that reinforces loyalty and that only happens when everyone is invited to the table. So help us bring more talent into the room. We ask that you welcome and invite, challenge and raise the bar, and not see limits in others. We need to be like Carl. Be like Carl and advocate, encourage, and support, because that's really how we got here and how we will keep winning accolades. I appreciate you all so much for being here. Thank you all.